Never mind your liver, get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino shot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Yeah, no, you no spot. Je nou spot. Even lief, even kom in de kijk van nu is hij Engelse moeder verstaan je. Hallo, hallo Michael, ik heb er wel een kleinmint. Lovely to see you, lovely to see you. Oh, let me get close up here to you. Hallo, when he come, 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 says. Nice to have you back again. Of course, every time he, wie is daar? He is a regular supporter. Warren G, as a DJ daarvan, van I was London uit. Lekker to have you on as well. Hey, welcome to Hino Spot, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Puto van Sel. I am here, of course, uh, because uh, we are have got a special historical evening tonight, and it is uh, not uh, not only that, but also a cultural aunt. You know, a cultural aunt. We are having a cultural cultural evening, and it is uh, is 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 uh, wonderful because we have Alan Weir from the local, you know, community here of, of these these people that come from around this uh, Eastern Cape, uh, all know Wootenswar very well. So we have a bit of that tonight. I would like to thank, of course, our Spencers, uh, Fitch and Leeds. I'm having a nice, uh, what is this, ginger, ginger ale tonight, ginger ale. It says here, uh, Fitch and Leeds, it comes from a name from English people, this English people, Bespocky. Ik weet niet wat bespokje als je wij voor gebruikt. It means in you individual. In you, that's what the guy told me. Uh, bespokje means individual. Oké, okay, so if you got the individual taste of a drink, then you have to have fish and leads. Nice. Yeah, exercise your books before the sale. As you can see, I've got my safari pack on. Yes, so, I mean, the core brook is so lekker. And it is uh, so good, it is so nice and warm today in Port Elizabeth. Hello, Valadia Jaconi, Italianers, ne? But you, you know, I'm very, it's actually like in uh, England, that's not in England. Jose Pereira is, zeker, of course, a friend of the Italianers as well. He's a poras, ne? No, he's poras. Hello, uh, thank you, Warren G. I love your show too. <laughs> no, and Opa, no, I say hello. Over we on the Tony is lekker on Tony eat a hair work. All right, we got a bit of a song. Hey, we do that song, eh? Hey, yeah, nee, goeie om maar. Goeie rij kom eens. Hey, let's go. Listen, they always say they had special knees at school. I say. Wendry Rich Jackson says hello from E.L. Cat Anderson James from the hill hell. Brett Hilliard is here as well And I'd like to see you what? He said yeah but Marinda Ferreira There's Marinda, hello Marinda Beverly Erickson and Manier I say hello for you she offer apple white and say your swar. I say so. Hey, I said oh, oh, Mimi, Mimi rap tonight. Oh yeah. I said oh, Glenn Fuller. I said the house at my oh. I said oh, Mike Bowood. Johnny be good tonight. Cake Andre Erasmus. Oh, it's lekker to see your name here. Yeah, I'll be doing lekker, my friend. Oh, Vivi and Trobek, say the Vadu El Tu. Hi, oh. And Mark Delford, who lick it swear. It's lekker. Chilly and Womanlet said, hello, Gino. Womanlet, that's woman, oh. Chef Apple White is busy tonight. Hey. I say go, go Wendy, oh, Wendy be good tonight, cappuccino, I say go, go Michael, I love that guy, what you got on your face, I said yo, Warren G, all the way from East London, I said Wendy Jackson, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a marvelous show here tonight for you. We've got Alan Bayer from Butenswar, and he's, he's just a, such an interesting character. And uh, we're going to talk all about his history, all about Butenswar, and all about his, his uh, interest in, in Eastern Cape history, which, of course, as you know, is close to my heart as well. I love it. Uh, and Philippus, my wife, is here. I hope my daughter lost. You better, better be right, yes. yes. Well, I hope your daughter lost for watching, because you can't watch on our signal. No, no. This is <laughs> Chilean woman over. Hello, brother. Alan Shaw. Yes, you talk to each other in the comments. I see that, you know. Just ignore me. Don't, don't, don't. I'm not here. Don't. Geschiedenis. Oh, see. Vietmos. Geschiedenis. Hello, Matt Mullins. Hi from London. Oh, excellent. Nice to see you, Matt Mullins. That's one of the Mullins. That must be a brother. I bet you that's, uh, that's Auntie Podge's son. I think. Yes, indeed. All right, Alan Shaw. Hi, Jill. There we go. Guys, carry on. Carry on, guys. <laughs> You, it's, it's great. So there's a sense of community here with Gino Spot. You know, we, of course, we've got COVID here hitting us hard the second time around. Whack a chung. Wow. And it's just so hectic. So, so keep safe, guys. I mean, this, this one is this, the second wave is real, man. It's just it's so hectic. And in fact, even our very own Darren Fuller, for, for, who does our Watch Your Watching, has had COVID. And I, I'm going to ch chat to her just now. She's back. She's, thank goodness she's back. But she, she came back from the brink. Clutching, clutching. She did. All right. So let, let's, let's have a quick look. Well, obviously, first, let's thank, thank the sponsors, of course, Fitch and Leeds. And Spa, who have been absolutely fantastic. A big shout out to Spa for being so, so supportive. And and of course, Amoeba, uh, our internet, always, always available. There we go. So um, what we've got now is uh, we, we've got our, our, our What You're Watching, which we will normally have with Darren Fuller. But I'm going to talk chat to her a little bit about the COVID as well. So let's get the What You're Watching thing going. Hello. Take a swig. Oh, I'm so I'm so pleased to see you back. So pleased oh, to see you back. Oh, we were you had us all very worried team. there for a while. Yes, oh, thank good. You so much. I missed I missed all of you guys as well. It was it was quite a thing. Um so yes, I did I did have covid at the beginning of um November. Um yes. but I did unfortunately end up in in hospital uh, for for 9 days. Um, so yes, that is like you so said, hectic. it really I mean, is, you, um, is, hmm. you don't go to hospital just, just for something like, like you were obviously, you, you were, you were, you were sort of at home and having symptoms. Um, did you yeah, lose your taste I, at all? No, I didn't, didn't you know, you? I didn't, everything tasted great. That's why, well, I, I actually, <laughs> first, the second day I felt sick, I, I went for a test cause, um, at our work. Yeah. Um, we're very quick to do testing. So I went for yes. the test. I, um, I, I was positive um, the end of October. And then I did my isolation at home. And um, it was actually mostly fine until right right before I was supposed to go back. And then my, yeah. um, lung, my lungs just couldn't um, take enough oxygen in. Um, yeah. And then on Friday, my, my boyfriend called the ambulance. So I was in there for about nine days. It was it was. Quite, quite a thing. Um, I was in um, high care. So it, it, it is very serious. Um, like you say, with uh, the second wave, yeah. it really is serious. So if you don't have to go out, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But, no, that, but that, it that, is that difficult second, to. Uh, the, the, the second wave is, is, is yeah, it's yeah. I mean, you, you, you got the front end of that second wave, I think. You Ooh. caught it on the, on yeah, the no. crest. You guys, yeah, no, it's real. It's it's um very real. So um, I would if you if you can obviously stay as safe yeah. as possible. You yeah. other Absolutely. not, yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I, I give it one star. Um, no, <laughs> I wouldn't and, do it. And I hope I hope that you saw I hope that you saw Greg could see her impersonating you as well. I don't know if you've watched that yet. Oh my uh, gosh, have I have haven't, it. and I'm I'm so honored that someone. Famous, someone like a writer for a famous show has now impersonated me, and I'm just so proud. <laughs> I haven't seen that it yet, though. Funny. I'm gonna look for it straight afterwards. <laughs> so All honored. Right, well, <laughs> well, back to work now because you're back. Yes, in, you're back in black. Absolutely. Let's have a listen to what yes. you got. 
Okay, yes, guys, I'm so I'm so happy to be back and I'm um, so happy to uh, be pretty healthy. Um, <clears throat> so obviously I've had, um, I've been at home the last week, so I've had some time to uh, do some research for you. Um, okay, so what Wayne said last week, um, the Queen's Gambit. I know he did mention it, but I we just finished it, I think, yesterday, the day before. And guys, it really, truly is an amazing show. It's so, so good. And what is really amazing is you don't have to know anything about chess to appreciate it. Um, you don't have to be good at chess. I don't think I beat my dad once at chess. So you don't have to really love chess or um, understand it to appreciate that series. It's so good. It's so beguiling. Anna Taylor Thomas is the lead in it. And she is just honestly in everything right now. She was the latest person to be cast as Emma in the latest Jane Austen. I think she's fabulous. She's so good. Um, so it's it's really such a lovely series. Um, it has obviously your girl power because you know it's this re it's a, a girl um, doing incredibly well at chess in the sixties. So you can imagine. Um, but it's just it's so good. It's such an incredible show. So um, I'm re recommending it. Um, okay, so guys, obviously look, Christmas is coming up, and I am sappy, and I love Christmas. So I watched the Princess Switch again. <laughs> So Vanessa Hudgens is the new Christmas rom-com queen. So if you haven't watched that yet, it's the sequel to The Princess Switch. Um, they're both on Netflix. And they're, it's just so charming. I mean, if you haven't seen the first one, watch that first. You're lucky because you get to watch both. It's the premise is it's the premise is really just two prin a princess and a, a baker from Brooklyn happen to be in the same place at the same time and happen to look exactly like each other. And not the wisest move, but they decide to switch places so that they can experience different things. And you can imagine what ensues from there. Romance, there's snow, it's lovely. So please watch The Princess Switch again. It's so, it's delightful. Um, okay, guys, obviously everyone knows how big of a nerd I am. So The Mandalorian season two, started I think it's up to uh, episode four guys it's so good it's just really really great um you know uh, Joe Favreau who um is the creator of the Mandalorian and a very uh producer very good um very good uh director writer in general I think he is amazing because he came in to save Christmas because he filmed the Mandalorian season two before um the pandemic hit so we're still getting it and it's so good okay it's obviously star wars uh, the mandalorian it's based on the mandalorian from the star wars law um if you haven't watched season one you're even luckier because you get to watch that first but it's just really really amazing the episodes are so good um i don't think anyone on the earth does not know about baby yoda yet because baby yoda is adorable it's just so good so please start watching the mandalorian if you haven't it's amazing like the the, the star wars world that, that they bring in it's very much like the original star wars or the you know the original episodes it's just fantastic so please please watch it um yeah i have some other uh christmas things but uh, um do it do it do it what's it what you got Okay, so I'm really bad with Christmas movies, okay? Um, I've watched probably about six in the last week, and some of them are awful, so don't. But um, two that I particularly liked, Christmas with a View, it's adorbs, watch nice. it. Christmas Made to Order. They are both still realistic enough to not, they're not like C-grade Christmas, they're B-grade Christmas. But they're really good. <laughs> Yeah, and Christmas is like almost here. So lovely, lovely. You know, I, I, I've, I've been I've been watching that uh, Mandalorian a bit. I've 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 seen two episodes. My son's been watching it, so I've been checking that out. That looks Good, great. So and it's got that Star Wars is Star Wars, you know, but it's, but it's got that that whole um, that old feel in the future. It does. I, it's, eh? I know. It's got like the technology. Yeah. Of of uh, of now and you know the effects and that, but it has yes. the old of the original Star Wars, so it's yes. it's amazing. But, I love but, it so much. Everything, 
like everything in Star Wars was, was dirty and used. And, you know, it, it's like you almost, even though you're in the future, you, you're, you're looking at, you, you're looking at it as, as if it's the past already, you know, which is, which I, like. I, know. I like that. No, no, no. It's really, it's amazing. If, if you haven't watched it, it's, it's a crime against humanity. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. But Darren, thank you. And we're very, very happy to have you back. I see the comments coming in as thank well that they love, they love you as well. They love you. And oh, so it, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vivian says she has a Yoda. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, oh, I'm so proud. Oh, thank you, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Very glad oh, to be back. And, and, and Wendy, I oh, see Wendy as well. Lovely. Wendy. Spying on you from Cape Town. Oh, lovely. Oh, they're excellent. He's spying on me or you? <laughs> no, no, I think he's spying on Alan Vaya. He's going to be here spying <laughs> on him. <laughs> All right, thank you, Darren. Oh, yes. That was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you ever so much. We, we, see you, we look see you forward next to next week. I will watch more things. Yes. Lovely. <laughs> Ciao. All right. Oh, Darren, we were very worried about her at one stage, but uh, she's all better. Indeed, she's stronger, stronger than all that. All right. So now, we, now ladies and gentlemen, we've got, we've got an amazing guest, and I'm going to bring him on without any delay. Mr. Alan Vaya. Let's do it. Let's have a little introduction, I think, uh, to Mr. Vaya, how about that, Mr. Hemmings? How I'm Alan Vaya, and I have a passion for the people in the history of the Eastern Cape of South Africa. I was born on a farm south of Grahamstown, where I grew up amongst the Tosa speaking people of our region. I went to school in Grahamstown and must confess that academics were not my strong point. In fact, recently I was delivering a series of lectures during the National Arts Festival, and one of my former teachers phoned to inquire as to whether it was indeed the same person that he'd attempted to teach. When I told him it was, he asked if I'd learned to spell yet. My interest comes from growing up on the farm, where I spent hours in the felt playing amongst the ruins of an old settlement that had once stood in a valley near a small stream. With a vivid imagination, I tried to picture the people who lived there, where they came from and what happened to them, and this is what started my interest. Every time I went to the library, I tried to find books that could tell me something about these people. Over the years, I realized that we'd always been given the European and apartheid history of Africa, which leaves huge gaps in the story. With the encouragement of a friend of mine who suggested that I had some ability at storytelling, and that's an art I learned farming and came through frequent visits to my bank manager, I took the plunge and registered as a tour guide. I'm no longer farming and operate full-time out of Grahamstown, where I'm privileged to be able to share my passion for the people of this region and their stories, which have played a huge role in shaping South Africa as we know it today. Ah, yes. Oh, it looks like Alan is having a little bit of an internet problem, you know. That's how it goes with these things sometimes. But, you know, uh, it's fine. I, like I said before, I, am a, I have superpowers, so I'm sure I can help. Because at school, at school, actually, they told me that I had superpowers. Well, what was the uh, thing that they, they used? Uh, the, they, they used to say, constant supervision. Because I had, uh, you know, my eyes. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, tough, tough at, at uh, of course, in that area as well, you know, Grahamstown area. And that whole Albany district is very tough, you know. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the kids, when we had the pictures taken at the school, then we would have one picture in the front and then one picture on the side as well, just to be safe, you know, for later. <laughs> And they, and they, they say, they even uh, my father, he, he wanted to make me tough, you know. He said to me, you must make me tough, you know. So he, so he took me uh, to, uh, to, to receive karate lessons, you know. And, um, and let me tell you, I, I stepped onto the mat and there's a, there is a big difference between uh, taking karate and receiving karate. <laughs> Indeed. So ladies and gentlemen, we have Alan Veyer in the studio. Let's have a look. <laughs> Alan, you're there. <laughs> yeah, but you made it. It's, it's, it's been a bit of a challenge here, you know. Oh, you know, technology is a challenge, Alan. It's fine, yeah. but you're on and safe. God, oh, I can hear you now. You've been sounding like old Donald Duck in the background there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you can hear me nicely now. You're looking like a caveman at the moment. Have you been, have you been uh, growing that COVID beard of yours? Yeah, you know, it, it's a mask, you know. You got oh, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, cha the challenge came up on the, on the, I think it was the 27th of March. And uh, anyway, the family decided I should do something about it. I'm going a bit feral now. So we'll oh, have to see. Oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> They're going to kick you out. <laughs> 
I see. I see. Matt Mullins is watching here. Matt Mullins is that? Uh... Hey, Matt, how's it, man? Jeepers, he's in, he's in London. That... I think it's bloody cold there. Is... is that Brian's brother? Uh, a distant cousin, I think. But you know, these oh, Mullins. Distant cousin. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, you kick a bush here, and a Mullins falls out. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! I see. I, I see. Uh, Mike Barwood saying hello to you as well. Lots of your friends on. Lots of your friends on board here, yeah, Alan. Yeah. Uh, tell you what, they've been uh, uh, clearly missing you. Well, I've been missing all my mates. Eh? Being stuck, being stuck here for a while now. So uh, let's hope we get through this thing sooner, sooner rather than later, and, and we can get back to some sort of normal. Absolutely. Are, are, are you, you're at the moment at Kareja, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm at, at Kareja. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've been general manager at Kareja for the last 10 years, but with this COVID thing, I've decided to, to move on. And uh, I'm going to be starting to move next week. So, yeah, we, uh, yeah, new things coming. Always oh, going to try. Lovely. lovely. Yeah. There's, There's one of your Carlton. girlfriends there. <laughs> one of my girlfriends. <laughs> hey, yes, that's hey. Rebecca Johnson hey, saying hello. <laughs> oh, Rebecca. Hey, Ruby. How are you, man? Yeah, Ruby down in Cape Town. Yeah. Okay, okay. Jan and Jan Ross. Hey, Jan. How's it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jan. Is it Jan? Yeah. Not Jan. I think yeah, I'm Jan, Jan, you know, because no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm most in my no, safari no, no, suit, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Alan... Uh, it's absolutely fantastic to have you on your show. I mean, I've been a fan. But Bouton Soir was it was incredible, you know. And uh, and, Thank you. and and I know that 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 um, we, we'll talk about that that just now. But I want to find out about your history because you you clearly come from the Eastern Cape. Uh, were you yeah. born here as well? Absolutely born in in Setley's Hospital in Grahamstown. Oh, five o'clock yes. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's always yeah. that, isn't it? Your mother's always, yeah. there. and it was five o'clock in the morning, you know, Alan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and it rained, and it broke the drought, you know. That's what my old man told me. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you came out, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And, and so, born and went to school there as well. Well, I, I went to Salem School, which is just outside where all the Mullinses come from. And in fact, Auntie Sheila Mullins used to teach me and Mrs. Emsley, Dave oh. and, and Neil Emsley's mom and yes. Sandra's mom. Yeah, she used to teach us and uh, and uh, Sheila Mullins in the little well, school. Robin, Robin Williams was also an Emsley as well. Eh? I don't know. <laughs> yes, uh, Robin. Yeah. Robin's yeah. our theatre Dorian here. She was also okay. Neil. So, all right. But Neil, yes, we know them well. So they also yeah. you kick a bush there. <laughs> Absolutely. I know. Look here. Yeah. And don't say anything about anybody here in this part of the world because they'll definitely be related to somebody you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Salem School, that, that's on the way to Kenton on Z, you know? Yeah, that's right, young. Down in the hollow there. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And, and, and I think um, so. So uh, primary was that primary school, high school? No, that was primary school. So okay. uh, started there in in nineteen sixty nine, and uh, and then I went to to Graham College in Grahamstown. Ah, right. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Boarding um, school. Boarding school, young. Yeah, that was a. <laughs> in, uh, I was telling somebody that just now. Um, I remember my my mom just gave me a whole lot of letters that you know every Sunday night you used to have to write home, and it was yes. normally started, "Dear Mom and Dad, hello, how are you? I am fine." And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I said I got four round seventy or four round fifty a month, uh, not a month, uh, uh, a term in pocket money, Jesus. and I and I. I was, I was looking at this letter that I wrote the, uh, the other day that my mom gave me, and it said, if I don't go to movies on Saturday, I will have one rond 40 odd left of my pocket money at the end of the month, so I can buy two, 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 two packets of two, two bullets and one packet of Marksman 500. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you buy bullets instead of going yeah. to... That's yeah, no, 
Well, I've been used to rationers, you know. You, you, you've okay. got rations, you know, two, two, two bullets and five pellets a day. But if I bought them myself, then I could shoot as much as I want, and that was fantastic. All right. Oh, yes. Like... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, yeah, grew up on the farm. Yeah, so Graham College. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we... When I started there in, I think it was 1974, we were still at the old school where Victoria Girls High School is now. And, uh, okay. uh, then we moved across to the what, is, what was the new Graham College then, um, in 75, I think it was. And okay. uh, yeah, finished school there miraculously, as most of my teachers will tell you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, my, sure. and my folks as well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and and then uh, so so from from high school, I mean, because t this this journey must have been a strange uh, route. You know what I mean? You don't just get into doing theatre and stuff from the farm. Yeah. I mean, your your grounding is obviously drained on the farm. You learn to speak closer, which I absolutely love. I, that yeah. That that's the yeah, way you, you got. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're suddenly breaking up a bit there, but yes, I'm getting the gist of okay. what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, uh, I grew up, you know, it's funny when you were, when you were uh, in junior school, sort of living at home most of the time, Corso was great, it was good, but um, uh, when you went to boarding school, I, I kind of lost it a little bit. And then, you know, after I finished school, I uh, went to the army. Um, and then I went, after that, I, I went and farmed up in the Karoo near, uh, between Beaufort West and Aberdeen for a while. And... Uh, yeah, so you kind of lose it a bit, but then when I move back into the area, you pick it up again. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of like riding a bicycle a bit. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and that, that 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 farming thing, I mean, um, I, I know that that uh, that, that it, it helps the storytelling side, you know, as well, which I'm yeah. sure, which uh, we, yeah. which we can talk about was because uh, I, I I mean I, I just that 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 storytelling thing seems to be a, 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 a it's a thread. With Afrikaans yes. guys, I mean those those oaks in the Karoo and even up in Namibia, I've heard oh. some oaks tell stories. Eh? You know that's the amazing thing. You know, Brian and I have had incredible fun doing Butin Swara over the years. Yeah. But I can tell you now that there there are for 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 the two of us, there are a hundred other people out there that tell far better stories than we do. <laughs> that that. Have, have are, are, are absolute brilliant storytellers, but they can't do it on cue. You know, yes, you've got yes. it in the right situation at the right time. And uh, yeah, farming up in the Karoo, uh, you certainly met those. And uh, yeah. um, and and being here uh, in the Eastern Cape, uh, you know, you, you just listen to this all the time. And uh, yeah. sometimes you think, geez, does this does this person know what they're actually saying? Because <laughs> They're almost challenging you to say, tell me I'm talking nonsense, but tell me. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, but but I, I, it's, one, it's one thing I, I, I seem to have noticed is that those in Tommies and in the, in, in the, in the streets, yeah. you know, the, the Afrikaans yeah. guys, the Klosa guys, and the English guys, yeah. all sort of that, that whole history, the cultural history, their storytelling yeah. is, a, is a thread there. It goes through the, all of them. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, and it, and 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 it's it's about it's about the, the you know the, the the when you pause and when you uh, yeah. say something and and the observations that you make along the way and yeah, you Absolutely, know, yeah. yeah. The, don't don't you find it because there, there are a number of things that 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 take those cultures and and they are are are. are um, Kind of former South African culture. It's it's mm. that pup and flace thing. The, the uh, it's, it's sort of, but the sort uh, of mashed potatoes and, and pup and, yeah. and, and 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 big pieces of meat. I mean, that's yeah. closer. That's Afrikaans. That's oh. that's Albany. Absolutely, you know, it's there. Yeah, no. It's all, it seems yeah. to be a, a vibe, and, it's, and it's, the storytelling is kind of the same thing. You know, there's so many yeah. similarities there. You know, and, oh, um, and, it, and it's the mix. Eh? It's the mix. I mean, you. You look at just the, the title, and we never, by the way, we never gave it the name Put and Swire. It was people just said, yeah. Errol, come and, you know, come and do your Put and Swire stories for, you, for us. <laughs> and, I mean, the, 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 the term Put, everybody thinks is Afrikaans. It's not. But, but yeah. comes from Kosa. It's a Puti. Um, a puti. puti. 
Um, Jeez, okay. So, so that was a uh, yeah. something that became part of Afrikaans. You, you, there's no origin of that word in any in the Dutch language or any other language except yeah, Tosca. you're right. Yeah, I never thought of that. I'll say broer. Yeah. You're right. It's a broer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it's broer or broeder or, or, or um, yeah, yeah. It's Boot not wood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then so is, Swar is is Afrikaans. So when when yeah. the British settlers arrived in this area, they they spoke to the the local Kosa people, or the 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 yeah. the track brewers, and they yeah. used to talk to each other as Boot or Hello Swar or Hello Boot and yeah. I mean, brother or Swar, <laughs> and that's just become part of the Eastern Cape language, and it's it's got no origin in English. It's of it's, it's Afrikaans and and Kosa. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that crazy, yeah. and yet it's so it's so um, tied into English as, as sort of yeah. the, sort of the eighteen twenty vibe, you know, as well. Like in, in yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and that that storytelling thing. I mean, when, when did you realize that 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 you could do this? You know, it's just I, I, always been part of you. I don't know. You know, well, I, I tell you what. At, at, <laughs> at school, I had the dubious uh, distinction of of. At the end of our matric year, they used to you hand out a prize at the matric dance for the biggest bullshitter in matric that year. <laughs> <laughs> and I won it hands down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. And, so that was your thing. <laughs> so, so I think storytelling, you know, started a long time. But, but I used to take it quite seriously then, and I was quite offended that I was known as the biggest bullshitter. But, but I, I was just telling stories. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, as, as a kid, I remember uh, my, my folks, you know, when, when they had people around, we used to get sent to the room, you know, kids must be, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Seen and not heard, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they used to find me creeping in and hiding behind the couch, listening to the stories that were being told and the jokes. And, and most of them, of course, were, were definitely not for, for junior <laughs> <laughs> consumption and of course so, so yeah, I mean I, 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 I go remember listening to that uh, listening to the stories and then at the cricket club at Southall you know ah, and yeah. Uh, yeah and afterwards um, you know the, the, guy, the um, old man and them would have a couple of beers and you'd listen to the stories and the jokes and that and and I, I loved it, and I used to repeat those, and 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 I think that was where it came from. And then, and yeah. then when I when I came back farming in in the uh, sort of the mid eighties uh, into the Salem area again, where I grew up, yes. <laughs> I, you know, we became part of the farmers' association, you know, <laughs> and so we go to the meetings, and 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 these guys would these older guys would would stand up and you know it was mr chairman through you <laughs> and and then they would go into a long story to illustrate their point <laughs> and 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 you know people would sit there and listen to this with you know deadpan it was all yeah. and and you'd listen to the story and then go and tell somebody else the story and they'd think it's <laughs> an area and and, <laughs> and, 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 and Brian, and as I say, listen, I'm not uh, certainly neither Brian or I are the only ones that can tell these stories. There are hundreds of people that do. But all we did was we used to repeat these stories, and at some point, um, instead of instead of just telling the story, the two of us used to go into character and then talk to each other. <laughs> yes. And 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 you know, hell, you know what happened to me the other day. <laughs> Hell, you know, I saw George at, at the co-op the other day, and you know what? <laughs> you tell the story. Yeah, there's it. There's and it goes. And that's how it, that's how it all started, and that's how we got on to, to eventually on stage, much to our surprise. Yeah. Yes, when was the first time you went to hit stage? I mean, the, yeah. the first time when you thought, okay, listen, maybe, maybe this is something here. Man, <laughs> we used to... We used to get asked, you know, the, the, the local clubs would be raising funds or something like that. And, uh, <laughs> of course. You know, the, this tennis club in Salem needed funds. And, yes. and <laughs> they, they used to, so they'd, they'd put together an evening or a dinner and they'd ask us, come and tell some of your Bhutan Swar stories, you know. 
and and we'd stand up on the on the stage there and and we'd tell a few stories and and the club needed money and they said why don't you beggars put something on at at festival you know oh, and, yes. and 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 the one bloke who who was organizing this got hold of me and said listen man brian's agreed to 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 do a thing at festival if you say yes i said well if brian's agreed then i will then he got on with brian and he said alan's agreed if you say <laughs> yes <laughs> so, I'm a bastard. So, <laughs> so we ended up i think it was i think it was in 1996 we ended up doing a i think they booked us for about five shows in pokey little venues all over the place and it was to raise yeah. funds for the club and uh um, I, I tell you what, I mean, we, we said, okay, we'll do it on one condition. Because up until then, people used to say, oh, we'll pay you to come and tell our stories. And we said, no, you know, that creates an expectation. You know, if, you, if you're paying, <laughs> you know, no, we can't yes. do that. <laughs> and no. So we said, no, we'll do a we'll do, uh, festival, but, but just understand that, you know, if it's a flop, we're walking out the door, we're going fishing. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I mean, you you must have been performing there as well. I think it was because it was Gary, Gary yes. Hemming. Gary got hold of us and said, "Hey, come on, guys!" And he organised an interview and a um, suddenly, Excellent. yeah, so suddenly you know people were starting to take notice of us, and and, and much to our surprise, because I I've got to tell you that it's daunting. You know what it's like yes. going on to no, 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 it's it's heavy. and and it's hectic. You know, when you've been farming pines all day, you know. <laughs> and yeah, you got to go on stage. Um, Absolutely, you needed a bit of fortification to do that. And uh, I, mean, you, I hope you got some, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get now. I've got. So, I've got. Hang on, I've got to get to you here. Hey, so where's the top? Where well, it's something, yeah, but <laughs> hey, yo, hey, look at yeah, that. Yeah. Hey, it's a lekker. That's a lekker one. <laughs> Tonic. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting the top. <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm coming back now. Okay, no, do it. It's fine. You I'll bought it. Bought now. it there. I'm, I'm here now. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I see Wendy saying the first time. The first time Wendy worked, she's our tickets lady. And the first time yes. she worked at Budden Soir show was at Lenick Hall in August 2000. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. And, and, and I tell you, so. I tell you who was uh, the other guy. Uh, John Flismus was with us that night. I'm sure. He also did some, eh? Yes, so John, yeah, yeah, no, he's yeah. Uh, John, John can have a go at uh, his uh, things. So he's edgy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he, <laughs> he is. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just, you know. Yeah, no, uh, excellent. I love it. Look at that. I got the same yeah. one. Uh, no, I haven't got the same yeah. one. I got it. I got a slightly different move here. You got a flag yeah, on yours. That's good. This one's got a flag. <laughs> yeah, nice man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cheers! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Cheers, 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 cheers. No, uh, so, so, um, and you obviously met um, uh, um, Brian. Uh, at, at obviously, uh, 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 after your your school uh, school days, where, where you, you, well, you said you were at school uh, together, I think. No, Brian's mom was the one that taught me in Salem. So, but he, oh, he's okay, okay. he's a hell of a lot older than me. You know, he's a, he's oh, right. about <laughs> five years older than me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian. Um, so when I got to Salem School, um, uh, you know, we only went to Standard Five, and I repeated <laughs> yes. Standard Two twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, and right. uh, Brian, Brian was already at boarding school in Grahamstown. So I, we knew, you know, I knew him, but he was much older than me in those days. And it was only when we okay. came back farming in the in the um, back to you know into the area in the in the late eighties yes. that we we got to know each other really as mates and and started. Uh, doing the stories okay. and so on so yeah, Jesus. yeah. So, so so we we, we went to so you, you were talking about grandstand then and 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 doing this and gary's obviously doing oh i see you're right you were 6 p.m oh. john was 9 p.m that's gary that's being right. two a double bull yeah out of the back of his car his office <laughs> was his car. <laughs> that's right gary had a he had a a, a chef commodore i think it was yeah. one of those Big bloody chef Commodore, and, he, and yeah. He, yeah, it was at the back of the car. Yeah. <laughs> no, I tell you, at, at that stage, I was still playing with bands. I hadn't even started yes. comedy and stuff yet. That's so, right. I mean, that was nineties. Yeah. 
No, but listen, Sorry. we can see that uh, you, you, because uh, you'd be at the drums at the back there, and 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 everybody would be watching you. <laughs> 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 oh man, no, we look. Mm. Drums always been my first love, but but I mean, mm. getting up on stage and doing comedy. I mean, you and you relate. Yeah. It, it's it's something else, eh? You know, we, as I say, I think the first the first show we did was was in the drill hall. Um, uh, the first city drill hall in Grahamstown, and yeah. uh, they they cleared the OC's office out, so they had, probably had about twenty chairs in there, and yeah. all our mates that came to the show, you know, to, just to support <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> but but you know, the, I, I'll, ne I'll I'll never forget going on. The, I think we were absolutely slaughtered. We couldn't have fitted another beer in, and and getting onto the, onto that stage. And, and by the way, those poles that we always use, we, we threw yeah. those together the afternoon before we started because we felt <laughs> we had to have lean on in case we felt <laughs> <laughs> They're great. I love them. I love them. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I remember standing here and my knees were shaking. I've never, I, yeah. I, I, I've never had that before. Not on a stage anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> the adrenaline. And, yes. And... Um, and then the next show happened, and then the next one, and then they booked us for another <laughs> two. And then we ended up after that at the we were we were invited to to perform in the in the uh, Monument Theatre, the Guy Butler wow. Theatre, um, for for the I, I forget I think it was it was still the, the 1820 Settlers Association or whatever it was in, uh, okay. then. And uh, fantastic. Uh, Listen, was, I've, I've got a clip. Yeah. I've got a clip here of of some of that. I'm going to play it now quickly for the okay. guys to have a look. But a button right. yeah. Okay, right. John Lewis, just keep coming. <laughs> and if you can get over lunch by pacing yourself, yeah. what you get into a long slow downhill of an afternoon. What you can get a second breath here by about six o'clock. <laughs> Eventually, you start getting intelligent. <laughs> and that's just before you get handsome. That's, what that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get handsome, yeah. cold, suddenly your feet want to start moving. Like what? <laughs> your singing and your dancing improves beyond all recognition. <laughs> like, you become so handsome, so intelligent, and such a good dancer and singer, what eventually you become... Invisible. <laughs> yeah. And if you can get there, eventually you're the handsomest, most charmingest, most sexiest fella in the world. Eh? And there isn't a foul what you couldn't charm the knickers off in a jiffy until you get home. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, you are, so are the happiest, most charmingest, most intelligent this, this fellow what can yodel and sing, dance, charm, and you walk onto your own rivanda, and the next thing you get mourned by a thin-lipped viper. <laughs> God, and that's the most dangerous snake you'll ever meet, that one. Oh, God. Yo. One glance out of one eye, but... And a whole day's happiness just evaporates like a morning mist. What do you think to yourself, myself? Why the moor did I even waste a whole day in the sun even trying to get happy? <laughs> and they always moor you with the same question. Where the bloody hell... Have you been? <laughs> but when you left home in the morning, you say, I'm going to the show. And when you get home at night, they don't know where you be. I oh, know. <laughs> hey, I've got bloody short memories. I oh, know. <coughs> and the next thing, before you can even answer that question, they move you with the next one. Hey. Do you know what time it is? Huh? And they ask you the time when they're looking at their own watch. Oh, no. <laughs> I 
what? They haven't been looking at it for 12 hours yeah. anyway. They ought to know what the time is. Yeah. And then God bless their gentle souls. They always make a more of a mistake. Eh? They overestimate your intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Then they want to start negotiating with you. Boom, boom. <laughs> but meanwhile, you so hard, you can barely listen, let alone talk. I know. <laughs> and then they want to make conservation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh it's dangerous, that would because you don't even know if they're talking to you. I know. <laughs> and then when you turn around to see who they might be talking to, they get cross. Probably. <laughs> they say you're not listening. I know. <laughs> And the trouble is they get ahead of themselves. Oh, no. They start giving you the answer before you can answer yeah. the question. Yeah. Oh, no. And the next thing they have five answers in front and two questions behind. Yeah. And then they wonder why the more you get confused. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I tell you what, there's only one way to sort that out. No one. If you get home like that and they start ghosting, you just say, whoa. <laughs> and you say, I'm tight. Get me it! Yeah? Oh, okay. Cold, always trying hard. No, straight out. But you say, I'm tired, I'm tired, and I can't concentrate. <laughs> but I can see. And I can see by the look on your face, what you want to tell me must be quite important. No. <laughs> so, why don't you help me by writing it down so I can read it in the morning? No! <laughs> Does that shut them up? Shut them up, so Sometimes for three weeks. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shut them up, Swan. <laughs> I like I want to have a conversation, a, a conservation. <laughs> <laughs> on the oh, yeah, revenge. Like, <laughs> do you remember that gig? Was that was that at the at the monument? I think it looks like. I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that uh, no, um, I think that that, that was uh, in the drill hall at St Andrews. I think uh, that one was, or it could have been at no, it was definitely wasn't at the monument. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But because that, that monument is a big, uh, that's a big venue. That that holds a thousand sure, people. Or uh, that's intimidating. Yeah, it's got high ah, ceilings, but. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Absolutely. I see Carlo Giacconi saying hello. Hello, Carlo. It's nice to see you, Italian hey. people coming into it. <laughs> how many how many uh Putin Swash shows do you reckon you've done? You um you know at, at one stage when I was having to do some tax returns somewhere along the line. <laughs> I think, oh dear. I think, and and uh yeah, I, 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 we worked out at, at our peak um in the in the sort of i would say the mid 2000s um yeah. we were probably doing 70 to 80 shows a year Yo. um and you know that that is partly the reason why i'm in the shape i'm in today because <laughs> <laughs> we just you made something <laughs> We'd go to a, a good mate of ours, old, old Bok Fowles, Grant. Oh, yeah? He, he, he was up in Natal, and uh, okay. he used to organize a yearly tour for us. And we'd oh, go yes. up there for about, about 12 days and do 10 shows. Yes. And, and you'd, get to, you'd get to your hosts, you know, and, and it, you know, all these country clubs, and they're, they're all fundraising, and they're... They, they're happy, they're excited, they've got a, a show that night. So you get there, and you kind of like expected to be in character when you get there. And, yes, and so, yeah, all the time. So 10 o'clock in the morning, the Oaks says, yeah, but they have a snort. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not what some people think a snort for us is a, is a beer. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so now, you know, it's 10 o'clock in the morning and, and you've got to go on, on stage that night and, and you expect it to be in character and, and, and people are paying you to be there. So they're expecting you to, you know, you, you kind of perform. And yeah. here you'd get to, by the time you got off stage, you know, after the show, you were absolutely finished in more ways than one. <laughs> and, and then... 
and then you'd go and sleep, and then the next day you'd get up and you'd be off to the next venue. So, and and now you've got a whole yeah. fresh one that you've got to go. And yes, yeah, so now yeah, it's, it's, it's cumulative. It, 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 it's, <laughs> it's it's like it's like the first night's cool, second night's cool, uh, you know. But it, it builds up and builds up, and by the tenth yeah. night you're like. <laughs> when you did Tucker, I see, saw you guys in London many years ago. So you've been over to London. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. Um, hey, Benita. Yes, yes, we were. We were in London at... Uh, uh, we've been there a couple of times. We we did a uh, a couple of shows at a, at a, at a, you know, a pub just off... I think it was just off uh, Oxford Street. Uh, yeah. Uh, a a place called Liquid Blue that was run by a South African yeah. and uh, okay. tiny little venue downstairs. But I mean, they, I think they packed in about 150 people there. You couldn't move. <laughs> it's all yeah, it's all <laughs> Definitely pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, I see, I see uh, uh, Brett Hilly is wanting to know why you got handlebars above his toilet door. <laughs> <laughs> I check it. That's where I hang, that's where I hang the wife. <laughs> <laughs> ah, classic. That's on the way to the bedroom, you know. And yeah, he is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where we go down those paths. Uh, um, uh, she says, I remember you lost your luggage and there was a delay yeah. for you to find your clothes. Yeah, yes, they, we, we got there. We had our poles. I mean, Ed, All right. we had, <laughs> you brought we them had with a, the Sneezewood poles packed yes. in my old army balsa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and we we waiting for our luggage and the poles come out and we're standing with our poles and nothing else. Nothing else came out. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, we were doing the performance that night. And uh, we, I think we went to an army surplus store somewhere and bought a, a hat and a and a shirt and a khaki shirt and that was, uh, and that's how we went on and the clothes that we travelled with the night before. <laughs> yes. And your poles, the bloody poles make it, but your clothes don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I think nobody would ever, nobody would have ever lost those poles. In fact, I, that, that particular set I haven't got anymore, but I've got another set that we travel with. That um, yeah. I have together, and that sort of thing. And I mean, you, you you must see the looks we get. You know, when you people look at these, they come up. You know, you've seen people come with surfboards and yeah, bicycles yeah. and all that sort of thing. And and, and a couple of sneeze woods come out. <laughs> <laughs> people wonder what the hell's going on. And other way, on, on that trip. Um, the, the guy that had organized it, his son was with us, and so we made him the pole carrier. And, oh, nice. and we got, okay. So, so because it's difficult getting on on off or tube with, with poles in a balsa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. I've never tried. I see Gordon Wright wants us to do a co co collaborative, uh, collaborative show for uh, for the ca my characters. Maybe we can have Poofter from Sal, yes, and then and then put the soir together. That would be quite nice someday. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, definitely look at it. <laughs> be lekker. That'll be very lekker. So, so I mean, and, and you guys, I mean, because you weren't, you, you didn't come into theatre, you didn't study theatre or anything. No. You, you just... I mean, when was this first time when you when you actually realized you weren't just tearing stories and you're actually doing a show? You know what I mean? I, I don't think we ever realized that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys, Al says, he says, tell us about the lady who laughed like a windmill. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I tell you where that was. I think it was in, in McClare. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Yuki yeah. McClare. Yuki McClare. It was up there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the one thing is, is that we've never scripted the show. It's never, it, it's never had a script. So you, and that's why you've got to be pissed half the time. So you don't overthink it. <laughs> yes. It's got to be natural. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were, we were, uh, getting towards the end of the, the show where we were telling a story and, and, uh, um, one lady was sitting quite close to the front and she had a hell of a laugh. It was like a... <laughs> so, so, 
Brian was groggy, and I said, I said, I said to, I said to, to Brian, I said, "Hell, but it sounds like there's a windmill here. What needs oil, you know?" <laughs> <laughs> And of course, that, that gave us a good reaction. And then, and then, and then Brian's comeback was, "Yeah, but I don't know what kind of windmill that is because it sounds like the more oil it gets, the more it squeaks." <laughs> yes, oh, that's so true. <laughs> and having having found in the crew, I said, "All I know, but it must be a climax." <laughs> Oh, no, those ones. It's the on, the, on the thing, yes. It's always written there. <laughs> oh, classic. But you got to love that stuff. I mean, that's, and it's, uh, it's all so original and all so local. That, that's, what, that's what makes the, uh, I think that's what, what draws people to it, you know? Yeah. Amazing just came, stuff. You know, it's one of those things. You just, you, you yeah. come out. And, and as I say, when you're in character, you, you kind of think like you would think, like the people that you know, you know, the, the, yes. those old people. Yes, yes, old people. Yeah, absolutely. And and they all speak the same kind of thing, you know. It's like that old yeah. Almady vibe, you know. It's not quite yeah. Afrikaans, but it's English, and it's not. It's just something in between there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, you know, the, the the servants woke me up too early this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, always very liberal. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I said, when, when last did you do a Button Soir show? Uh, probably about uh, about a year and a half ago, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're still you're still in there. You're still in there. You're yeah, still, still in there. In there. <laughs> Love that <laughs> jersey, <laughs> Al. <laughs> what jersey? <laughs> oh, yeah, she says my hair is windmilling. You're right. My hair is windmilling. <laughs> I've got some hair going on here. Also, got a bit of COVID hair going on. Here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, and uh, but but I know, Alan, um, and so, something that 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 interests me uh, as well yeah. is is your uh, is your interest in history and the, and the Eastern yeah. Cape history, you know. Yeah. Um, that's that, that's that's fascinating me, and 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 um and just just the whole uh uh. Closer thing, the the the, mm. the 1820 settlers that came in, the the trek booths that were here already, sort of sort of uh, pushing the boundaries of this frontier that 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 yeah. um, the closer and that were coming down from there, that chase, being chased down from from the the, the wars from with Shaka, you know, it, yeah. it was a hectic time. And and it's uh, and uh, I mean, what is your what is your favorite part about the history there? Obviously, you come from Grahamstown, so I presume. Well, uh, you know, I think. Whew, what is my favorite part? There, there, there are lots, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know, there, there's sort of there are lots of misconceptions, and and you know, um, like for instance, you know, that the Corso were moving south, and that they met the, uh, you know, the the yeah. was the track was the, the actual fact that Corso or the the Nguni people had yeah. arrived, yeah, uh, oh, a thousand years ago, really? and. Yeah, and uh, and you know they they had mixed with the the bushmen and the koi koi that they came across yeah. as they moved down to the area, and, they, and that's where the clicks yeah. in the Kosa language the come from. Yeah, they come yeah, from yeah. the bushman languages. So, um, I think the part that fascinates me more than anything else is is that is is just looking at at uh, communication. Um, yeah, the how people misunderstand each other, and yeah. Um, People coming from from England in in the in the eighteen twenties, fr from what they've come from, and they've been put into a situation here that they don't understand. They they get put in here. They they come they come across Kosa people who who they think are primitive. Um, yeah. But but you've coming across a society that has evolved here for several thousand years that works, yeah. and you're coming from a you, you, and then you're trying to transplant. Something from yes. Europe here, yeah. and 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 how yeah. those two meet, and they don't they don't come together, and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean these are things that we're dealing with today. I mean, it, you yeah. know, uh, with it being the eighteen the the the, 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 the bicentenary of the arrival of the eighteen twenty settlers. Yes, twenty twenty eighteen twenty. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've I had a whole lot of talks in that lined up this year um, for that, but of course okay. COVID compared to that. But but the one thing I'm I say to people is, you know, the, 
one thing about history that we know is that we've learned nothing from history. Um, <laughs> and, and it tends to repeat itself. So, you know, so just, just think back and, and remind yourself that you're living in a country where 11% of the people have the vote, um, where rest is, is absolutely rife. There's massive unemployment. Um, the economy is in, in tatters. Any kind of protest is banned. Um, detention without trial is the norm. And when people do gather in spontaneous protest, the army is called in, 11 people are killed, 400 are injured in one day. Now, you think I'm describing the dying days of apartheid, but I'm not. Yes. I, I'm just right. describing England in 1819, after the Napoleonic Wars. Um, okay. There, there was massive unemployment after the war. The economy the was wars. intact. The, the uh, industrial revolution was was gaining momentum. Unemployment. Um, the army and, coming back as well, I presume. Is the yeah, whole lot of they were all these soldiers without, without you know, work. And work. Uh, the economy that war creates disappeared overnight. Yes. So suddenly there's... You know, so people are desperate and they, they're looking for something and, and somebody comes from, you know, yeah, then you've got the colonial office saying, yes, we've got a whole lot of trouble down in the, in the, the eastern part of the Cape Colony and uh, we need to get this sorted out. It's costing us a lot of money to put soldiers there. So, yeah, you know, I think, hang on now, you know, we've got a huge problem here as well. Perhaps we could transport some of this problem down there to solve a problem <laughs> down there. <laughs> Yeah, and like... yeah, and they come up with a scheme, and they, they tell people that uh, you know they, there's they paint a, a a wonderful picture of the picture, eastern yes. Cape, verdant, beautiful <laughs> farming country with abundant water and fertile soil, and uh, you know people are sitting in London, and these these pamphlets were being produced and put out there, and. To, to, to most people who are sitting in poverty, who are saying, okay, well, this is an opportunity. This is a chance. There's no future for me here. And, and also, you know, the, 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 the churches, the parish, um, was responsible for the welfare of all the people in the parish. So there were all these poor people there, and the, and the churches couldn't afford it anymore. So they, they were saying, okay, let's put together what we can and send these people out there. And, and you had to be part of a, a party that made up... Uh, uh, people who had capital, people that had skills to kickstart a, an economy that didn't exist here, and um, yeah. you know, and quite often, of course, it was the um, the local landowner whose uh, son, youngest son, probably was paying uh, far too much attention to the chambermaid, and and this was embarrassing. So they, so they gave him a handful of money and sent him off um, to to <laughs> South Africa. Or to, to the Cape Colony. I must tell you, my wife will shoot me, but but her family are descendant from one of those. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. that she comes from she comes from Rhodesia, you know. Oh um, yes, uh, Rhodesia. She grew up there, you know, but she was yes. a Whitfield, and, oh, uh, right. and and her ancestor Charlotte uh, uh, Whitfield. Um, she she came out. Um, in, in uh, Mr. Brown's party and was listed as, as, um, as Mr. Brown's niece, I think. But in actual okay. fact, Mr. Brown um, was Catholic and he wasn't allowed to get divorced. And, 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 and Charlotte Whitfield was, was his um, mistress. And this, this embarrassed the Whitfield family. So they gave him and uh, Mr. Brown and, and, and Miss Charlotte Whitfield Money to come out here, along with oh, Mr. Right. Brown's wife and family, and they oh, settled. Nice. In, yeah, and they settled in the Coombs, you know, in the I Coombs. The, co the cat the Coombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the Coombs? <laughs> yeah, the Coombs is just. It, it, it's one of the settlements on the way to the Fish River outside Grahamstown. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay. and they they built two houses. And Mr. and Mrs. Brown lived in the one house, and Miss Whitfield lived in the other house. And Miss Whitfield, I think, had five children by Mr. Brown. <laughs> then Mr. Brown, in the, in, the, in the first frontier war, uh, 
threw himself on an assegai, I think, having oh. two mistresses with, and he, <laughs> he got killed. And um, she was left in, and three three sons. Um, one went into the Trans Sky. I think one went into the Eastern Free State. And uh, I, I mean, Bruce Whitfield, uh, you know, yeah. the, the, he's one of the family. Um, yeah. All yeah, there's quite a few. All, they, all related, they all they all refer to their ancestor as Charlotte the Harlot. <laughs> oh my son. No, you know, but, no. that, but that's, just, that's just an illustration, just one little one of, of this mixture of people that came out here. Yes. And, and Great. Uh, Viv is asking about the German settlers there. Do you have any knowledge of the yeah. German that? That Stutterheim and, and, uh, and that, that, that uh, Dortrecht or whatever, that, that old bar, eh? Yeah, that, that's interesting because um, another one of those stories in. in uh, after the the Eighth Frontier War of 1850 to 53, the the permanent boundary of the colony was moved to the the Kai River, and they they needed settlements um, along the border area, as they called it. Okay. Yes. Um, and that that in 1820, 30 years before that, that they, the Brits had, had fallen for that trick once before, and they weren't about to fall for it again. And <laughs> Some some bright spark in the in the in the the, the um, colonial office. Well, you know, I was thinking about this, and, and the Crimean War had just ended, and okay. there were German soldiers in the in the German Legion in the British Army. They were they were what we would today refer to as mercenaries, but in those days it was quite acceptable yeah. to, to to hire your soldiers out to somebody like your cousin, okay. you know. Germans and the, and the, no, it's uh, fine. Uh, Send yeah. this, guys. Just uh, how That's many Deutschmark the ones that are dreaming that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the Crimean War had ended, but these guys still had two years to run on their contract. So they said, hang on now. We've got an opportunity here. We can offer these guys land along in the border area um, in exchange for their contracts. So we don't <laughs> pay them out. We don't keep paying them. We just give them land. Oh, nice. Um, they're going to have to fight for it because the toss are determined to repay it. Because they're also there. Yeah. So I think in 1857, um, about 2,500 of these German sectors, mostly soldiers, arrived here. And, and this is where all the names come from in that area. Stutterheim was General von Stutterheim, who was their, ah. their commanding officer. Um, okay. Berlin, Hamburg, all those places. Yeah, but the interesting thing is they also they also said to, told them that they better get married before they come out here because they also they also didn't want them going feral um, when they got here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so they, they thought that they'd keep it European. So yeah. they they got a whole lot of girls, Irish girls, potato famine people, people were starving, and yeah. these girls volunteered to to come. Up with these soldiers, but they they put they took them to to uh, Southampton, put them in ba uh, barracks adjacent to the men's barracks, and just yeah. let nature, nature take its course. And and one minister says that before one of these ships left with these now new German settlers, he performed yeah. over 120 marriage ceremonies in one morning. <laughs> yes, with the holy Irish and, girls. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> but he, he he knew there was confusion. So he never filled yeah. the wife's name in on the marriage certificate. He just left it blank. Okay. And he said, okay, there it is. And when you get there, you can decide who's going to be with who, and you can fill it in when you get there. <laughs> and, and he ship took off. So there was a lot of swapping and stuff going on on board ship. A bunch gotcha. of swingers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> necessity in those days. Necessity, I must tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was swinging. It's what they call it. <laughs> Oh my word! No wonder that time is like it is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh they, they got here. Yeah. They got here, and and they were settled in all those those little villages, and they were little military villages, really. Okay. And um, they weren't allowed to speak uh, German uh, in public; oh. they had to speak English. And they also had, they had Irish wives. So okay, anyway, yeah. so yes. these. All these German settlers that had moved in here, and of course, that's where my my surname Vaya is, is uh, has its origins. Ah, but Vaya, of course, yeah. 
Ah, so your mother, your, your great-grandmother was Irish? No, no, no. In fact, um, uh, we weren't part of the original settlers. Later, um, a lot of German settlers came out um, in the early 80, 1880s, and that was when my family came out. And they were brought out as, as indentured laborers. Um, okay. And uh, a lot of farmers... Uh, uh, were brought out at that German farmers were brought out at that time and uh, okay my family was was one of those yeah okay so for, for farming and um, uh, uh, Gary's Gary's asking what's your favorite uh, history story which you used to tell in the history tour oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so many. Where, where did you t uh, I know that I think, so I think Gary's been on that uh, tour as well yeah yes uh, yeah that was it's fantastic uh, it, it, I mean where was that it was in Grahamstown yeah, I used to do them out of Grahamstown, um, okay. uh, around the, um, yeah, depending on, you know, I used to do like a half-day tour, it was just a lecture outside Grahamstown on, on the hills, on, on Signal yeah. Hill, um, or I used to do like a, a, a day trip or two-day trip where you'd go through the Fish River Valley area, right up to wow. uh, Bedford and, and, and those places, and uh, um, rivers. All those rivers there, yeah. as, as you, you know, yeah. you drive that place, you, you drive that place so, so often from PE to East London, yeah. and, and I'd, I'd love to know some of that history. I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole yeah. lot of forts out there. I don't know which ones you know. You but, know uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing is, is that there are more um, 19th century British-built military installations with 120 kilometers of Grahamstown than anywhere else in the world. Gee whiz. <laughs> there were more. There were more buildings, uh, 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 military installations built here than anywhere else in the world during the the the, the eighteen hundreds, the nineteenth, what is it, nineteenth century? Yeah, you know. Gee. And I mean, here's an interesting one. Um, if you look at, if you go into into Fort Beaufort, there's a Martello Tower um, that was built as a fortification there, and the Brits used to do. They used to standardize everything. Um, you know, so that and plans were drawn for specific things and so on. So, okay. So the the, the, the military out here sent a request to build a fort on the bend in the in the Cat River, in Fort Beaufort. Okay. Yeah. So the Army Engineers Office gets this, and they say, okay, river, um, right, Martello Tower. Martello Tower was built as a coastal defense uh, uh, okay. structure. So they were built. At the mouths of rivers and so on, um, round towers so that they deflected the cannonballs and um, uh, overlooking the river mouths and so on. So they they sent the plans out here for a Motilla tower to be built on a corner in the Cat River in Fort Beaufort. Uh, it, it, like a coastal it, a coastal defence yeah. in the inland. <laughs> it holds, it's the record. It's 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 a it's the only coastal defensive structure that's been built so far inland <laughs> in the world. For both it. <laughs> yeah. oh, those guys, we don't mind. Gives us a nice <laughs> view of the area. <laughs> <laughs> can can you imagine the, these engineers that were here that had to build that thing? I, I wonder. I wonder at the number of colorful expletives that have been used when they got oh, those. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? I see uh, LaRue, LaRue Bessinger is asking, give us a Gavin Purden story, but who's, a Gavin, what's it? who's oh, Gavin, Gavin Purden? Yeah, oh, oh, Gavin. Gavin. He was a legend in the Bathurst area. Ah, right. Oh, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just trying to think, oh, Gav. I mean, yeah, he was a beauty. He sadly he passed away some years ago, but he, he's uh, okay. You know, the burdens down there are, are awesome. uh, okay. Oh, the, uh, family yeah. down there, Bathurst. Yeah, down in Bathurst, you know. Um, they have the big bra well, rocks, yeah. bra there. Yeah. Was it pineapples? Hey, some pineapples. Pines. Pines. Well, I think he was known. He was he, he was he was known um, as Pineapple Purden, I think. Yeah, even is oh, right, is it? Yeah, Pineapple Purden. I see Tingas is, Ting is asking for a, 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 about the state of the roads, the potholes for someone <laughs> coming back drunk. <laughs> <laughs> they want to hear Dave, stories. Hey, Dave, how are you? 
Dave, Dave is a is 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 a a, a, um, a vendor guy who's who's uh, yeah. one of the the lodge managers of the biggest lodge. Uh, yeah. Long way up. Eight a long way, but you know, yeah. He's not, <laughs> yeah one of those, nah. he's not one of those vendors that sit on the side of the road. You're selling cigarettes and fruit. You know? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the vendor, yeah, the vendor, yeah. Not that kind of vendor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. What's that story? Yeah, What's it, that story? That story. It, it's interesting. That story, you know, that, uh, and and it was a, a meeting that 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 I was at, and Brian was at, and and so on. And it was in Salem, and it was I, I think it was in the late eighties, and it was a meeting with the then uh, member of Parliament, which was Errol Moorcroft, and yeah. he, uh, whatever they called him there in those days, the MEC for roads or something like that. Oh, okay. And all the farmers associations sent delegate uh, uh, delegates to two delegates to this mass meeting in Salem about the, the state of the roads and 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 it was gonna you know then they had the, they had the table on the stage with the flowers and and, and with the yes. with the, the dignitaries you know yes. they said you know, and all the farmers associations and the oaks they're all they're all drumming here you know get the bigger up you know these roads are big and, and so Mining each, and mining. <laughs> you know, they say farmers complain the least in February. Huh? <laughs> the only thing right. days. <laughs> so oh, 28 days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, these these guys all start, you know, start, each farmers association gets an opportunity to explain to the MEC and the and the member of parliament the, the state of their roads. And you know the First book I said is Mr. Chairman through you. <laughs> you know our roads are begged. You know our, our buckies are getting shook into pieces on these roads, you know. <laughs> and the next one stands up, he says, Mr. Chairman, these pineapple trucks are beggaring our roads up, you know. They <laughs> kick up so much dust, yeah. My sheep are oh, when they're four years old, they already got no teeth left from eating dust. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes on, and the, the the representative from Coombs, the Coombs, yes, uh, the yes, the Coombs, yes. is it the chairman? I corroborate with all these other fellows. I, 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 I agree with them, you know. But I, I I'm not going to tell you how bad the roads are. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> a couple of youngsters had been at the club, at the tennis club, and were on the way home. My youngster, you know, when you go over the hill and you get where that where that hardworm is leaning over the over the road there next to that dipping tank, and you go down that long hill there, at the bottom and you turn the corner, you know, and there's a milly land on the left. You know that place I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. He said, he said, my youngster had a more of a prank there the other day because he came down that hill, he turned the corner, and he was going along. And he saw two years in the road. And he thought, what, I'm not going to swerve for that Wundfly at this time of the night. What? He thought it was a rabbit in the road, you know. Yes. <laughs> next thing, a whale of a prank, he's upside down in the Millie land. You know why, Mr. Chen? It wasn't a Wundfly in the road, it was a donkey sleeping in a pothole, so what? <laughs> <laughs> and this is all done uh, deadpan and I, and I promise you this is a genuine story and, it's, <laughs> and, then he, and everybody laughed and he said Mr. Chairman if you haven't got money to fix the roads at least give us a roll of reflective tape what we can tie around the donkey's ears so that the quittings know we've got the donkey or <laughs> one <laughs> Ah, oh, that's classic. Yes, like you know, you can just you can just see the guy sitting there yeah. talking, and he, you know, he's just trying to explain his story. He's desperate. Oh, the roads are begging. <laughs> the roads are begging, man. <laughs> My bucky's bucky. <laughs> no, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, oh, yeah. the, uh, do you remember the story about what GC Hill and the jackals? At certain farmers, at a certain farmers' meeting, another farmers' meeting. Yeah, no, that was also 
that story has been attributed to lots of people, but the story goes that the, you know, with all the new game farms um, in the area, jackals have become a big problem, you know, because uh, nobody's controlling the jackals anymore. And they have this farmers association meeting and uh, they got an expert out from Grahamstown, from Rhodes University. Uh, an expert. <laughs> yeah, an expert. And, and now, you, you know, now I'm going to tell it as it was told um, by one of the <laughs> blokes at the meeting. He, he said, he said, earlier now it was a funny meeting. Eh? So I, the first thing that happened, eh, a woman stood up on the stage. Eh? And, I, and, I, and it wasn't a bachelor's party because she kept her kit on. <laughs> and she stood up there and she told us she was a doctor what had studied jaggles. But anyway, we found out afterwards she wasn't a proper doctor. She was one of those paper doctors from Rhodes, you know. <laughs> and, and she said, if we want to control the jaggles, what we've got to do is stop killing them. She said, what we must do is catch these jackals humanly in a hawk. Now, I've never seen a human who can catch a jackal, yeah. Catch them humanly in a hawk. Yes. And then when we've caught them, she said, we must cater them. We must sort them. I don't think she knows these things bite, but. <laughs> but she said, we must sort them. All the male jackals one side and all the female jackals the other side. Then we must... Catch the male jackals, good cool of them, you know, turn them over and fuggy pinches. They're the cast straight to bed. <laughs> well, we thought that was a bloody good idea. It'll serve them right for biting our sheep. <laughs> Look at them, she floored us. She said, no, but when you've done that, let them go. We thought, no. Nah. All that trouble. Catch the big an orc, humanly or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> then get bitten, good call lying him and getting properly bitten when you fuck the pinches. Then let him go. But listen, we were crossing, and old George was the crossest of the lot, but he even took his hat off in the meeting. He stood up, he said, he said, Mr. Chairman, through you. With all due respect to the young lady, but she don't know what she's talking about. It's not going to help to catch these jackals humanly or otherwise. And then fuggy pinches on them. Mr. Chairman, they're not pumping our sheep. They're eating them, so what? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Alan, you nut. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Oh, jeez. Like, uh, I, 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 I can see how this, I, I can see how this whole thing unfolds. It's, it's, it's amazing. I, I absolutely love, uh, and, and I love the fact that it's local Eastern Cape. It makes us all feel like, like it's, a, it's, it's so close to home and real and, and yeah. it gives us something to hold on to, you know, it's okay. We're yeah. from somewhere. Be easy. Oh, what? The armpit of the, whatever. <laughs> the armpit <laughs> of the country. We got something here, but we got something. Here. <laughs> You know, you know that you know, another little story. You're talking about the armpit of the country, the drunk that gets, yes. talking of, of London, the drunk that gets yes. onto the onto the tube, and he's standing next to this this woman who's holding onto the, you know, and she's she 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 hasn't shaved, under you know, <laughs> so he's about he's about this far away from her armpit. Oh, yeah. He's looking at her and he says, yeah, you, you must be a dancer. She says, why? Is there anybody that can lift their leg up that I must be a dancer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I see Wayne, Wayne Howarth is, is, yeah, he's, he's saying, hey, Wayne. tell us, Grandpa, Clarence. Ben, they've all got their favorite stories here. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa Clarence <laughs> Berryman. Uncle Clarence Berryman. Yeah, that, that's Wayne's grandfather. Uncle Clarence. Oh, right. yeah, he was a wonderful, wonderful guy. And um, I bumped into him in town. We were, as usual in the Eastern Cape, we were going through a bit of a drought. And I bumped yes. into him in, in town the one morning. We had a shower of rain the night before. And I said to him, hello, look, have you get any of that rain? He said, rain, my boy. Nah, it was like spitting on a hot stove. <laughs> 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 and if you, 
if you like me and you grew up with a wood stove, you know, to test how hot it was with the iron, you still. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's it. It's like <laughs> pitting on, on hot stove. stove. <laughs> you know, so so drought is no is not is no new thing for a for an East Cape farmer. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> oh, Bre Brett saying he's loving the stories. That's fantastic, man. And oh, I mean, boy, I, man. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, like, like um, the I don't know how much you know about the Nanaka area and that. I I, yes. I, I was having a look at the history there. Got, there was Congo's Kraal there. I don't know if yes. you do you know anything about Congo. that. Congo was actually a, 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 a Gunukwebe chief by the name of Chungwa. So, uh -huh. interestingly, the, the, the Tosa are made up of about 46 different clans, of which yeah. half are, are in fact um, Khoi Khoi. And, okay. and, and it's, a, it's a mixture of Khoi Khoi and Nguni, the, 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 the yes. Tosa. And, and Congo was actually Chungwa. And, okay. uh, and he, his kraal was, was there near Nanaka, near the coast. Yes. Uh, that was his his place, and um, I think it was at the beginning of the first frontier war. No, it wasn't the first one. It, it, it was the second the second frontier war uh, in about eighteen seventeen ninety odd seventeen ninety four. He's like okay, and he um, no, I've I've got that wrong. In fact, it was eighteen twelve when Colonel Graham okay. crossed the Sundays River. Chungwa okay. was hiding in the Addo bush. Yeah. And uh, and a work commander found him, and they came across him. They shot him in his sleep. He was sleeping. They shot him in that other oh. bush. And uh, yeah, so that's Congo. That was in fact Chumwa. Yeah, okay. okay. And so, uh, so, so he was there. Yeah. As you said, and Colonel Graham. Obviously, that's Grahamstown, Colonel Graham. That's why these yeah. names often change, you know, uh, because in, in the end, these guys were they were terrorists, you know, these guys coming from England. Yeah, and uh, you know, but. Yeah. The, the thing about it is, one has to look at it in, in context of, of the time, and and yeah. you know we, we we can look back and we can judge um, all sorts of characters from history, but one has to look at it yeah. in the context of the time. And Colonel Graham was a was a soldier. He yeah. he he used a, a, a method here, scorched earth, which yeah. they had used in America, they had used it in in yeah. Europe, they had used it all over the place. It, it wasn't an unknown thing at the time. And yes, it was horrible. It's not absolutely yeah. terrible. And, and, the, the, and the worst thing about it was is that the, the Tosa people and the indigenous people had never, ever experienced anything like that. Whereas in Europe, it yeah. was kind of a, it was the done thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the Tosa and, and these people, you know, the one thing about the Tosa is, is, is that um, in any kind of conflict, there were two things you never did, and you never harmed women and children, and you yeah. never destroyed property. Okay, mm -hmm. so in conflict, um, if you attacked your neighbor for whatever reason or something, you, you'd kill anybody who was a threat to you. In other words, the men, you'd, you'd, you'd kill them yeah. or, or try yeah. to anyway. Yeah, but you yeah, never yeah. killed yeah. women and children, <laughs> and, you never, okay. and you never destroyed property. So, because when you defeated somebody, if you destroyed their property, you took away their means of survival. So then they were going to be a bigger threat to you in the future. So yeah, you you went into a conflict and you inflicted enough damage to to make them submit. Once they submitted to you, they were left with enough resources to look after themselves. They would they would have probably have had to pay some kind of. Um, what would you call it? Tax, if you want to call it reparations. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, and, yeah. And, but but you never destroyed things, and and that's what yeah. the, the, that's what the big difference was when Colonel Graham came in here. Okay. He destroyed yeah, everything, and he, and he and he left them without the means of survival, and the, and of course, yeah. 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 Yeah, there we go. Matt, Matt saying, uh, lovely to hear a bit of Eastern Cape humor and stories. Keep it up, he says. Yes, we'll always <laughs> will. <laughs> we will. But I love yeah. that, that, that kind of history. It would be, it'd be awesome for you to come on every now and again and just give us a little bit of a history story about something, man. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely call on you in the future. Uh, I love you. We, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. I'd we'll love to. I mean, it's, been, it's been delightful sitting here having a little... A Gen lovely two. little fiction lead here now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see that. Uh, LaRue's <laughs> asking one more story there about a whisp about Whisper Clayton. What's that? <laughs> Uncle Whisper. Now, Uncle yeah. Whisper was known as Whisper on account of the voice that he had, which was nothing like a whisper. 
Lord, <laughs> ang <Angle> West, eh. <laughs> Is that the story? Oh, oh, he was a he was also one of those incredible characters from from this area. And I'll I'll thank Uncle Whisper. He used to farm down there in, on the Fish River, near the other other side, uh, uh, um, Carnival. You know, just other side Carnival. And uh, yeah, they loved their cricket, and they you know as most of the settlers do here, they loved their cricket and they. <laughs> but um, I, I think of Uncle Wisp and I, um, one story I remember him telling, telling me, and he, he was in the Second World War and, and he'd gone through Alamein, the, the desert and so on. Oh. And uh, in Italy. Um, yes. They were liberating and, Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Us and they Italians, had, we were there. Yeah, we were there. there. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, uh, and he, he was telling a story one day. He said, he said, yeah, look, you know, we came up, there was a farmhouse, and we came up these terraces, and we crept up on the beggars, yeah, and there were some jerrys inside. He said, what? I went, I went through the door, yeah, and there was a beggar lying there, and as he reached for his gun like that, I shot him clap, through the butt, you know. It's like talking like a bushbuck hunter. He said, <laughs> clap, through, you know, through the, through the butt. <laughs> yeah, he said, but that started the hornet's nest. The oh, they chased us out there. He said, we went down those terraces. But he said, yeah, there was a fence at the bottom. He said, I couldn't find a tuba. Now, a tuba is, is a little hole in the fence. I couldn't find a tuba to get through. He said, I felt I felt like a guinea fowl running up and down the fence. I'm looking for a hole. He said, I'll never, ever shoot a guinea fowl on the ground again in my life. But I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. Oh, <laughs> classic. Oh, no. Oh, there's one more. There's another one. Yeah, see, Mike Fuller saying, saying the story about Salem and the Ark during the floods. What's that? <laughs> Just, uh, Uncle Laurie Amos. His son Trevor still lives there. Trevor's a, Ellie's a clever beggar, you know. He's, I, th I think he's almost <laughs> a professor now, you know, Trev. But uh, uh, right. uh, I'll. Oh, oh, Laurie, he used to farm outside Salem, and somebody broke down outside his his uh, farm there the one day, and, and and he was helping him change the tire. And this bugger, I think, it was from Joburg, and he and it was dry. And he said to to Uncle Laurie, he said, he said, "Hell, Uncle, does it ever rain in this area?" And Laurie said, "Yeah, you remember in the flood when Noah had to build the boat." Yeah, said we had twenty points here in Salem, so. And his other story was, he said, he said when uh, he went into the Salem shop, and the guys used to go there and drop their stuff off for the for the at, at the halt. You know, the railway bus used to pick up the produce there. And you'd go in and buy the newspaper from Gordon Hill in his shop, and. And you know the, the farmers used to gather there in the mornings, and 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 uh, Uncle Lor walked in one morning and he said, "Chaps, gay yourselves for a flood, gay yourselves for a flood." And they said, "Why, Lor?" He said, "Look here, yeah, I've just seen a fodu, which is a water tortoise, walking <laughs> uphill across the road, and when those buggers are heading for our ground, you better gay yourself for the flood." <laughs> tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> they all laugh. It's take a while. He says, yeah. he says, but don't laugh. Water tortoises, fools. They can't talk, so they can't lie. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, my soul. I see somebody, somebody from Richmond, Richmond, Virginia, uh, from yeah. East Cape Boyke. He's saying hello all the way. Where's that? But Malcolm Will, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. I see. Uh, uh, I. A dog danger. Yes, I was um, danger. I used to. I, I, <laughs> I, when when I was at Salem School in Sub A and Sub B, um, I used to board with the Longs. Now, uh, okay. so I was a weekly boarder with the Longs. They actually lived further away from the school than we did, but on our side okay. of Salem, there was no bus, so you didn't, you know, ten k's away. You didn't drive back and forward every day to drop your kids at school. That was. We used to take okay. it in turns and lifts. And 
So I brought it with yes. the longs, Uncle Colin Long. Uncle Colin, okay. he had a, a dog called Danger. He said, yeah, it was a good. And look here, when you start getting into hunting dogs and these buggers start telling stories okay. about their dogs. Now, Danger, hell, it wasn't a dog that. It was a legend. It was a legend. <laughs> <laughs> look here. He'd get on the spur. What? And he'd go he'd get to the fence. You know, the bush bug had been through there. Oh, danger. Just to go sideways. He'd go through a fence like a 10 cent piece into a parking meter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And Jack Russell's. Yeah, how clever dogs are. You ever watched the Jack Aye. Russell? You know? Yeah. You know, it runs like it and that runs on three legs, you know? Runs <laughs> and the three legs and the holds one up like it. I just keep one on spare, but because when they get <laughs> close on the spur, they can put the other one down. <laughs> <laughs> when they, then, then it's like, yeah. then it bites. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Alan, I'll, 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 we'll keep you here all bloody night here with these guys. <laughs> I, I, I always I always ask, and we can't keep Alan here all night, Oaks. We can't <laughs> really. We've got these stories of the stories. We'll have to get you in again with Brian. <laughs> <laughs> a few, quite a few from Graeme, Stan, what you listening there? Eh? Well, listening or watching, I don't know, they guess still got the wireless, but... <laughs> uh, no. But um, uh, you're, you're, I always ask my guests, eventually, um, uh, at the end of the end of the interview, we ask um, their, their best gig, their best time that they've done a performance, and then their cuckest gig, because the cuckest ones are always the best stories as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, what is your, your kind of your 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 best one was? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about the best one, but I can definitely tell you about okay. it. <laughs> Let's have a listen. <laughs> well, in fact, there's, there's one that was embarrassing, and there was one really cuck one. Um, the 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 the, the really cuck one was uh, um, we we invited to the car car in car. Oh um, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. no, that was, now we are talking, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've been waiting the whole on to, to talk about the car, car, yeah. car. Well, well, we, so, so we were invited, and the one thing I've learned about doing the show that we do is, is when you're going to an audience um, that know who you are and where you come from and so on, it, it, yeah. it's, it's really different going into an audience. Yes. Like, like oh, if you've been yeah. if you've been taken uh, uh, by a sponsor to do entertainment and and you go in and nobody knows who the hell you are, <laughs> yes. And, yes. and and you start and they just got they've got absolute they, they look at these characters and they have got absolutely no clue no context <laughs> no nothing no idea and yeah, it's yeah, scary. Yeah. <laughs> and that happened in, in the car car in car we we went on stage and I think after about five minutes. We heard a couple of chairs scraping. Not a sound had come out of the audience. And another five minutes later, having given, pulled our best lines and done whatever we could, yeah, right. somebody switched the lights on and the whole hall was empty. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody there. One of the tables had been knocked over as they left. They emptied oh, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And, and that and that was and, and funny enough. So we went to the organizers. We said, "Hey, listen, we out of here. We gone." It's not gonna, <laughs> I said, "No, no, no, no. You're on tomorrow night." And it, it was actually part of a, uh, a in the, I think it was an Mnet production called "It's a Funny Country," and oh, yes, okay. we were part of a, a a thing that happened. And the next night, they had a full house, and it and it and it was fantastic. You know, it's just it's oh, funny how it goes. Just the yeah. first one. <laughs> yeah. oh, good. And, 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 good. and you know, you, you, I mean, you know what it's like. It just it knocks your ego for a, a six. You just it like, does. Oh, it's just like a knife. Absolutely. You, never, you, don't, you don't sleep. Oh, no. You just sweat. And you... <laughs> but no, I but I mean, one of the funniest ones, the embarrassing ones, was um, at, the, at the Gramstown Festival one year. Sheep is odd. Um, we'd had a few beers as we normally did before. Uh, yes. And uh, I see, a, I see I, a thread there. <laughs> but I had a, I, I had a bit of a bladder infection, oh. <laughs> so which necessitated um, relieving myself fairly often. <laughs> well, halfway through the show, 
I was now desperate. You know, you can't talk with your bare teeth. And, <laughs> and and I'm trying to I'm trying to say to Brian, just give me a line, let me get out of here. <laughs> and he's not playing the game as <laughs> usual. <He's not> fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and, and eventually I said to him, yeah, but I gotta go and check on my lamins here at the back, and I walked off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> this is I mean, no, yes. the best. You go and have a leak. Yeah, go. <laughs> well, you know, he, he managed to carry on. And, and, and as I say, being unscripted, you know, you can. Yes. And, he, and he brilliantly picked it up. And I get back there. And uh, he looks at me and he says, what happened? I said, yeah, but that fellow was fast asleep. I had to kick him three times to wake him up. <laughs> He said, but I don't know why he doesn't have a leak here next to the pole. He said, you normally do. <laughs> I could have just done it on stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. Alan, uh, it's been, I, see, I see there's one message here from Duncan Cripps. There's uh, Tip and Mears, uh, yeah. Rocky Mears uh, from Buddy's yeah. Liquor Store in Gravestone. Absolutely. Uh, you must have known yeah. him then if it was the bottle yeah. store owner. Yeah, you know, a little bit too well, you know. <laughs> he said, Viv says you must write a book. <laughs> Have you? Teenage Bruce Fenters. Now, Bruce. Yes. I, I'm going to tell you a story about Bruce. Bruce is, I think he's okay. in the UK. Okay. When the first time we went to go and do a, a, a tour in the, the UK, Bruce comes from, from uh, he's another Rhodesian, you know. And he ah, was our. So he sees us yeah. and fish as well. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was one of our field officers in the in the pineapple industry, and uh, um, uh, he we went over to London to do the show, and yeah. uh, it was organised. Uh, one of the nights was organised um, at the Three Services Club in London. It was all the old Andrians, okay. and um, we we did the show there. And the next day, Andrew Latrobe. Um, I think it was Andrew. Andrew, Latre, yeah, he he was running Standard Merchant Bank in London at the time, and he picked us up and took us. He was at Oxford. He was a a, 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 um, a Rhodes Scholar, okay. and he took us for a wonderful tour around uh, Oxford. And and he was also an Oxford Blue for for rugby. And um, okay. he picked us up at this little place we were staying at in uh, uh, Fulham, I think it was, and and we were on our way out. Um, getting out to the freeway, and we're driving down the street, and Brian taps me on the shoulder. He says, hey, there's Bruce Fenters. I said, bullshit, man. Bruce Fenters in London. Bruce is in Bathurst counting pineapple bins. <laughs> he said, I promise you, stop. Stop. So uh, Andrew pulled over, and we stopped. Brian jumps out, runs down the road, claps his buggy between the shoulder blades, turns out it was Bruce Fenters. <laughs> and he, he, Bruce had come over. Same, I think his sister was 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 hell of a ill at the time, and and he'd gone to see whether he'd flown over the night before to see whether he would be a suitable donor. Uh, 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 oh man, blood marrow donor. And he just walked yeah. out the doctor's surgery, and he was walking down the street. And at that time, we happened to drive past him. I mean, from Bathurst <laughs> to London. So. Yeah, where can pineapple well, spot? Yeah, <laughs> He looked like a character from your mother-in-law's long drop, he says. <laughs> that's Brian. Oh, Is Walter. That Brian? Walter, Walter. No, that's Walter. That's Brian's son, Walter. Oh, Walter, okay, okay. Hey, how's it? Well, he, he's a, oh, a character. He still tells much better stories than his father. I've got to tell you that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's, taking, he's taking the stuff, man. Eh? <laughs> that that, that oh, story like comes parents. from... Have we got time? Can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go for it. Come on. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of people on, on online here looking at uh, asking questions. <laughs> oh, that, that story comes from a. Um, sorry, I was, something was leaking. <laughs> it comes from a, a, a story about the, uh, um, the long drop. This bugger is t he's telling the story. He, he, he had a Mursa beard. And he'd shaved it off, and his and his mate said to him, "Why did you shave your beard off?" But he said, "Yeah, a long story." He said, "You know, the mother-in-law was staying with us, and um, 
And she came in one morning at breakfast time and said to me, there's something wrong with the long drop. Now, but I know, it's, I know the long drop's wrong. You don't have to tell me that. She said, no, there's something wrong. You better go fix it. So but I finished breakfast and I walked out there and I opened the door of the long drop and I looked in and I couldn't see anything wrong and I closed the door and I was about to turn and walk away. God, she was standing right behind me. I said, Mom, there's nothing wrong with the long drop. She said, there is. You haven't looked properly. So I opened the door and I walked in and she was right behind me. I said, look here, there's nothing wrong. She said, no, look inside. Well, I said, I know how wrong it is inside there. You don't have to look inside to see how wrong it is. She said, look inside. So I go by through the seat like that. I say, Mom, it's as wrong as it normally is down here. She says, put your head in. Go. So I get to some foam flaggers and I, and, I, and I put it in. And I get my head in the long drop and I'm, I'm holding my breath because I what? can't hold my breath any longer. And I, and I pull out like that. And as I pull out, in the front of the seat, there was a little crack in the wood. And my beard got caught in the crack. Ah. And I pulled out like it. God, it was sore. I squealed like a pig. She looked at me and said, yes, it's sore, isn't it? And she turned around and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't expect that one. I can say. Uh, oh, thank you, Alan Bayer. What an absolute pleasure to have you on my on my show. You've been an uh, absolute, yeah, absolute breath of fresh air. It says our, our special listening. How many stories remembering for the pig and whistle? And my folks, uh, uh, my folks, Dixie yeah. and Sheena Pringle. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're driving fast. Tell me about the telephone lines. I can't. I, I, this, this, no, that was a lorry. lorry. No, that was a, Bobby Miller he bought a new car and somebody went to PE with him. And uh, <laughs> I said, yeah, that car was fast, young. He said, oh, Bobby, he drove so fast, he made the telephones look like corrugated iron. But the telephone <laughs> car looked like corrugated iron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bud Hale will fix your long, long drop, he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bud. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, but thank you, Alan. Thank you so much. I'm not going to yeah, keep you. you. We'll, we'll have you here all night with these oaks. It's been amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. What a, what, yeah, a, what a pleasure. Thank and, you. Um, and and we'll definitely give you a call at a later stage. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you guys on and, and, yeah. uh, and have a bit of a powwow again. It'll be lovely. Oh, fantastic, man. I've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the evening. And I've, I've enjoyed, you know, you know where I bought this at the spa. But... Ah, very nice. Eh? They like yeah. that. Just, that's a new look one, the Indian tonic. Yeah. Got it at the spa. Oh, the, oh, the spa. Yeah. <laughs> the spa. <laughs> Excellent. And spa as well. Eh? It's very yeah. good. You know your yeah. stuff, yeah. You yeah. know your stuff. <laughs> It's funny that, and the internet, of course, is a mobile, of course. Eh? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, Alan. You've been a legend, and uh, oh, thank, thank you for you, joining man. us. I've got, I've got the uh, the competition now, so the Oaks must get ready on their on their keyboards because because yeah. they can win a, a hamper of Fitch and Leeds. You're going to get one as well. We're sending it oh, out to Salem, but yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send it out yeah. on the trucks. Going to bugger up, bigger up your roads. <laughs> 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 oh my word! Even from oh, New Zealand, I see you got people here. I, I see oh, yeah, there. Julian yeah. saying thanks for the chuckles. Thank you, Julian. Oh, so, man. so we got we got a competition now. So we're, 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 I'm going to play a song on the drums. I've got the drums yeah. hidden yeah. over here on the on on, yeah. on my on my right, and we're going to play the song, and they've got to give us the uh, the the title, uh, and, uh, and 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 the and the moment. I think the, I think the moment uh, the, the the title and the and the the the. The moment that, that it happened, okay? We want the moment that this song was played, and we want the title of the song and the singer. Uh, all right. So we're going we're gonna to head over. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank yeah, you so much for you. coming on. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hit. Thank you so much to Alan. What, what an absolute legend. We're going to do. I'm head on to the drum cam now. And, uh, and it's the competition time, so get ready with your, your keyboards. And I want the, uh, the name of the, the song and the artist and, uh, and the place that it happened. Uh, and uh, and then we'll uh, 
We'll get the winner and we'll send you a, a case of Fitch and Leeds. No matter where you are, even in, even in London. If you're in London, you can still do it as well. It's cool. All right. <laughs> you are the winner thank you so much for joining us tonight thank you to spa thank you to fitch and leeds thank you to all of you for joining us and special thanks to alan Vea. what an insanely interesting guy all right oh, hey. thank you ladies and gentlemen and our winner of course which i've uh can't find him now <laughs> we'll, we'll get hold of you <laughs> where is he Oh, Gary's lost him. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Bellyman, there he is. All right. Is he the winner? Is he the winner? World in Union, PJ Powers, World Cup 95. That is right. We'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> We're all the way in Cape Town on Saturday, so we'll do something from there. Ow! Relax, sit down. Coming out of PE Town. We'll drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver, get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle, have a Gino shot.